but we're always using all of the spheres all of the time in this body. Okay, Sekert. Okay, Sekert is representative of the powerful, powerful use of understanding, the use of the knowledge. It's the use of the knowledge. Sekert is also represented as um, the magic, the magic, uh, the magic ability or magical abilities, the power of the spoken word power of affirmations powerful the powerful the power of right thinking and right hearing which is the first discipline in this 12 disciplines of mind okay so that's the Kurt uh, the seed of understanding the use of the magic and by the way magic is the use well magic can be represented by, in this diagram also known as the tree of life Sekert can be represented as the the use of Tuhuti, the knowledge, taking in consideration that you're one with all. You know, the, the, the great higher, the higher trinity, the divine trinity, the great divine trinity, one, two, and three. Okay, the use of the of this of the great divine trinity is magic. Let's go down the chart. Let's go down. Okay, by the way, this is the Ba level. Okay, this is the Ba level of the Pautni Turu. Let's go down to the Ab level of the Pautni Turu. In the Ab level, we start with Ma'at. Ma'at are the laws governing all of nature. Interdependence and interrelationship of all the the all could not exist without ma'at there has to be an equilibrium a balance established or we have chaos and this life is not a chaotic life we may perceive the chaoticness of life when we don't apply law to life in absence of law there is chaos it appears to be chaos it's all perspective Ma'at represents those the laws that govern in the infinite the infiniteness of life. Mathematics represents well the word ma'at comes from mathematics. But that is why mathematics can be, be used to represent any aspect of life. So ma'at is the laws that govern the interrelationship of all things and you can also using the law of correspondence see how this corresponds to Asar. Okay, Asar is the wisdom and knowledge and understanding that you are one with all. And because of this balance that's happening based on the law, uh, represented by Ma'at, you have proof that this is so. Okay, now let's go over to Herokuti. Herokuti was a tough one for me to understand when I was uh, learning this. And I'm still learning it. It's still digesting with me. Okay, Herokuti, as you can see here, represents divine justice, the executor of law, and it also represents analytical thinking. And it's, it's, the, it's the center, as you can, I don't know if you can see that in small print there. Herakuti is the, the numerical center of the Pa'ut Niteru. That's a point that needs to be uh, acknowledged. Herakuti 
it, with my understanding, is that those things that should be done in absence of any reason, feeling, and emotion that may taint a certain action or a certain thought that you may have. Okay, herakuti is what sh should be done under law. Okay, and you have circumstances, outcomes, effects that are the result of not being in honor with Hedokuti. He, he will administer justice swiftly, instantly, based on the law. Uh, let's move on. Let's go down to Heru. Heru would be the will, the free will. Your power to choose. Now, let me, let me zoom out for one second because I want you to see this, this other trinity that we have here. Okay, this trinity of Asar, Heru, and Aset, which I'm coming to, is the divine trinity that is represented and is, and is if you study other religions, you'll see that there, there's also a divine trinity in those religions that also correspond to this divine trinity. Hedu represents your will. Now, Hedu has a choice. Hedu can take instruction or take advice or counseling from the above. The consciousness of Heru can take consciousness from above or it can take consciousness from below. Most of us take consciousness from below. If you're taking your instruction from below, your above will be an offspring of, the, the, of, of your choice to take instruction from below and I'm going to go deeper in it when I get down to Geb. I'll go deeper into that. The wise, enlightened one will take instruction from the above using the Ab and the Ba spheres. Okay, taking instruction from above. using Taking instruction, I mean using your, your intuition, understanding the fact that you're one with all. Understanding the fact that you have the power of, of your spoken word, which is um, sekert, the magic, the power to bring things into the physical world by digging into Amen and, and using your magic to bring them into the world of Geb, which is what Geb is. Geb is the physical world. This is the physical world. I'm going to come down to that, but I, could, I had to make that point. So anyway, so Heru is your your will you have the choice to exercise your free will in in the manner that you so choose a free will based in wisdom has greater outcomes in geb outcomes that align themselves with your your happiness now I must explain happiness is the base state of Amen and Asar. It's the base state. It's the founding state. It's the first state. Happiness is not anything to be acquired. Happiness can be covered over by emotions and actions and effects that are feeding you from the Heru. Okay, it, it, but that's a matter of perspective. That's also a lack of control because it's very easy to look in this world of Geb and not see anything up in, up in the above. It's also easy with Geb to take instruction from your emotions and feelings if you have not developed them based on these fears, based on Herukuti. Okay, so Hedharu is your imagination. It's the, um, the thinking that applies to the whole. Uh, Artistic expression is in there. Con congregative thinking, thinking with the congregation, with the congregation being the, co the congregation of ideas and consciousnesses. Okay, it's, it's thinking in terms of the group, taking in consideration the group. 
okay, of the group. I'm using law of correspondence to show that group can mean different things. Okay, so that's het haru. Overall, it's the imagination. It's the your overall whole imagination, and there's a power there. Sebek is bits and pieces and snips of your het haru, your imagination. It's what you believe. It's um, thinking within a narrow box, and you can you can see that if you're operating, if your geb is feeding your head heru, which is what this line represents, your imagination will only be limited to your experiences in the physical world. Okay, what you've been taught, what you learned in the physical world okay and you're not taking anything above into consideration that would be a violation of uh, Het Haru you see these all of these lines all of these lines are communication channels to say that th each of these spheres can take instruction take wisdom take knowledge take energy from the sphere which connects it Okay, if your head heru is, is feed, if if Geb is feeding your head heru, you're gonna be very limited. Most most of us are operating in that manner, and our our beliefs are only based on our limited experiences, which is why opinions and see my vid, my video on opinions. Why I did that video was because of this, because of Sebek. If your opinions are based in Geb and not the above, you're gonna have a very limited view. And not only that, you you will lack control of your life if you're operating from Geb primarily. And if Geb is feeding your Aset and your Heru, uh, let's, let's go into Heru, I'm sorry, let's go into Aset quickly. Is the ego, is the seed of early learning. Heru brings things, not Heru, Asar brings divineness if you're coming from top down brings divineness into the world of Geb although Heru can also as you can see from the line feeding up Aset can also give birth to what you're experiencing in this world okay and you got a feedback loop here because she's giving birth to Geb and if Geb is feeding um, ideas and consciousness and Aset into Aset they get birth back into get so you got this limited it's very let's let's take these 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 this lower level by the way this lower level is called the sahu okay which is what the majority of society is operating under the sahu sahu s h s a h u division okay this is the sahu if your get is running your sahu it's feeding your imagination it's forming your beliefs. These are being passed on to Aset to give birth to your gift. This is this is the, the this is the division of lack and limitation, uh, which is why we need to be accessing the higher spheres because we want to take control of our gift. In gift, you're operating mainly from feelings and emotions. There are two levels of feelings and emotions, I should say. Okay, you got the gap level of feelings and emotion, and you also got the, the base state of feelings and emotions. The base state of feelings and emotions will be operating and coming from your ba. And what we are, the way we're supposed to be using, according to ancient knowledge and scripture, um, ancient wisdom, and you, you know the, 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 the ancient scrolls. We are supposed to be giving feeling into motion to what we want to birth. We give if we have an idea. We have an idea or emotion or using our imagination, okay? What we want to give birth to, we associate a, that feeling to it. If you want to be, let's say, um, a great musician you have to first imagine yourself and see yourself and, and immerse yourself into the feeling of being a great musician 
and attach that feeling and attach those emotions to it. Now, based on your free will, you got, you know, your word, your thought, your hearing can pass on to your free will and you'll take the proper action to maybe you need to study. Maybe you need to practice. Maybe you need to perform to be this great musician. Feed that into your offset for offset to give birth into the physical world. The, what we normally do is we choose based on our beliefs, what we see. And feed those into our imagination. And we visualize and, and, and limit our possibilities based on what we can see, touch, and things that we've heard. If you remember back in high school, you had, you may have had a, uh, a guidance counselor who will look at your grades, you know, assess you, your psychology, your personality and say, well, I think you should go into this. Or based on your experiences, maybe this university will be good for you because they have this blah, blah, blah. Okay. And then you make a choice or you form a belief based on that counselor's beliefs. And then you feed that into your asset and you say, oh, I want to be an engineer. Nothing wrong with being an engineer. I used to want to be an engineer. Uh, okay. And you feed that into your asset. You become an engineer. There's a, another way of approaching this whole thing. You're using, by the way, you, you see that you're still using the Pa'ut need to rule. You're still using spheres six, seven, eight, nine, okay, but predominantly, which is what most of us do. We cut ourselves off from our intuition and we listen to the, our counselors and we look at experiences of people in our family and people and friends and, and what we see on YouTube. And we make uh, we associate our feelings and beliefs on that. That's letting Geb control your sahu. There's nothing wrong with Geb. The beauty of this life is that we get to control Geb. The power and our ability to control life will be based on how we use these other spheres. Spheres. It's not an easy word to say. Okay, so based on how we use these, and I can't omit or amen, because all come from amen. Okay, so the, the depression, feeling unhappy. Okay, let me just stop for one second and go into happiness, because I had somebody tell me not too long ago who I was uh, assisting, counseling, that happiness has to be acquired. You, you, you're not just happy for no reason. Now, tell a baby that. Okay, I'm, I'm sure a lot of you have seen a baby smile. I'm talking about infants, you know, less than three months old. Smile. Okay, is that not happiness? Is, was there anything that ne needed to happen for that baby to smile? <laughs> okay, what ha what happiness is? Is happiness is part of who we are, but if you're operating in Geb and you develop that inertia and habit of thinking that. You can only make choices based on what you can see, touch, hear, taste, and smell. That's a very limited thinking, of course. You, I'm sure you see that now. That's a very limited way of thinking, and you don't control. You don't have control of your life. Not only that, you need the things that you can see, touch, taste, and smell to be happy. You need those things. If you're operating from your asar. At the, and you're operating from your bar level, you know and you feel that knowledge that you possess is all you need to be happy because having that knowledge allows you to control your geb and control those things that you can see, touch, see, and smell, right? Those things that can come into your life. Taste, touch, see, smell, hear, right? Do you see what I'm saying? I hope you do. This is very limited. And if we're operating from that, our lives will be limited. This is unlimited. And if we're operating from here, then our lives will be unlimited. Having this knowledge is your happiness, your joy. Okay? Understanding that is your happiness. You don't need the things. You can create the things in your ba. You create the things. That's the happiness. I, I'm, I'm trying to stay here for a second because I'm not sure I'm getting across to everybody. 
but you can uh, make sure that you're able to leave a comment so that if, if it's not clear i'll be happy to go into a little bit deeper i'm only scratching the surface here i just i'm only this video is really long now uh i really wanted to go into how i use how i use the paut need to rule uh, for the sake of time, I'll do that in another video. But thank you for listening. Thank you for watching. Until next time. Peace, love, happiness.